Coming up, two eutectic knives straight from the hands of Liang Ma. Uh, two Wingard wearables, one for me and one for Jim. Thank you so much. And awesome and aluminum. We're going to be talking aluminum handled folders. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments this past week was from Mind Body Adam. He says, I live in Israel. I always carry a three inch folder. Since October 7th, I carry a small fixed blade on my belt band for emergencies. I'm waiting to order a TKL Knives Night Stalker CG next pre order. <clears throat> a couple things, uh, mind body. First of all, I couldn't recommend the TKL Knives Night Stalker any more highly as if you've watched this show, you know. And then also, I just want to give you my best wishes and say, you know, stay safe, watch your back. Things get dicey here too. Things are getting dicey here for for kids on college students uh, on on college campuses. You know it's crazy. So uh, everyone's got to be careful. Everyone's got to kind of bring the temperature down a bit um, because uh, we're we're having some some uh, dangerous situations happening on our college campuses. And and I got to say, uh, since I have this uh, this time right here, Harvard, Yale. Uh, Penn and Columbia, those kind of Ivy League schools are not what they once were. They used to churn out captains of industry and science and policy and uh, other great men and women. And now they're just releasing flocks of bleating ingrates overprivileged without any sense of perspective. And it's really embarrassing. And I got to say, you can't just uh, go from a pri privileged life to pretending to be revolutionary and uh, expect to be taken seriously so anyway mind body adam get that tk night stalker uh tk knives night stalker wear it wear it all the time because you can it melts right into the waistband it hides under a t-shirt like nothing and uh not only brings great peace of mind but also happens to be a really good edc so couldn't uh, recommend it any higher uh next favorite comment was from mr king human great name on my fixed blade knife collection and he did the mathematics and this is what always bothers me you can't do the math people don't do the math he says you stop buying knives and sell these and you can get yourself at least a used ferrari jeez and uh <laughs> We won't get technical. I happen to know that Ferrari is very selective in who they allow to buy their cars, which I kind of think is cool. Uh, they're the only ones who haven't made a grocery getter yet. You haven't seen an SUV Ferrari yet. I've been seeing the Lamborghinis around, and it makes my heart break every time. Um, you know, I know Maserati is lost, and, uh, you know, even Bentley makes one. But Ferrari, hold off. Hold off. Uh, but Mr. King human, yeah, doing the math sometimes is painful. I realize that when I do these collection videos and I have them all out and I look at them and I'm like, Oh my gosh, time. Um, you know, when I bought that, it was easy to do. But now that I look at it, like I could, if I could get the original value on all these knives, you know, I'd have, I'd have a, a fat, fatter wallet right now. As you see how I said fatter, like I've got this big fat wallet I'm sitting on. Ah, it's so uneven all right there we go uh so thanks for the comments one and all i really appreciate it i appreciate all the views all the likes all the subscribes uh and just you being here sharing videos is a great thing to do as well so i, pr I appreciate it one and all all of that being said let us do get now to a pocket check In my front right pocket today, I had the titanium version of the Dirk Pinkerton designed Night Horse. Uh, one of my favorite modern EDCs out there because it's big. It's four and a quarter inches long. But of course, that's not the real reason why I love this thing. It's a Dirk Pinkerton design. And I'm crazy about his design sense. Nice guy, too, by the way. Uh, crazy about his design sense because he has a very modern style but he incorporates ethnographic and historical weapons into everything he does and takes those cues from history. And they, they either filter in in a subtle way or like right here, they are a modern interpretation uh, of an 
of a traditional knife, in this case, the Spanish Navaja, the large folder uh, men started carrying in their cum cummerbunds when they were no longer allowed to carry around swords to settle their beefs. And uh, have always, I have always been a huge fan of the Navaja. I don't have a real Spanish one. I would love to have one made by Miguel Barbudo. If you don't know who that is, definitely check him up. Uh, check him out. Uh, but the traditional horn shaped handle you got here, you have the um, Spanish clip point, which frequently looks something like this, a long clip, kind of shallow um, with, a, with a pointy point and a deep belly. And I just love this thing. This is made by Asymmetrical. That's the Beyond EDC line, which I... Uh, we haven't seen much from recently and hopefully they, they, uh, I know that they've had some, you know, bugaboos here and there working things out. Um, not, not out of lack of experience because, uh, it is run by uh, a guy who knows, uh, who used to work. Uh, we've he had David on the show here. He used to work at Kaiser and all these other knife places. And I had a great dinner with him <clears throat> and Dirk last year at uh blade show and just kind of kept my mouth shut as much as possible that's kind of hard for me to do but kind of listen to them talking about industry stuff it was pretty cool uh to listen to anyway that's what i had in my pocket uh front right uh main stage if you will uh the night horse from the great and powerful dirk pinkerton also an, an incredible knife in my uh, mostly in my right pocket right next to the night horse is was the Midnight Jack, the Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack. This one in that twill carbon fiber. And not only do I like twill carbon fiber, uh, the only one I've complained about really is the basket weave. And uh, this twill looks really nice, especially when it's uh, radiused and contoured like that. Uh, but just incredible fit and finish and um, walk and talk and all of the... Uh, all of the different things. It, it's a superlative knife. It is an outstanding knife. You would have trouble finding better slip joints than than the Jack Wolf knives uh, slip joints. You might take uh, exception to that. You might say they're overpriced. You might say, uh, but I have a lot of slip joints, and I uh, not from every company, uh, but I love Rough Riders, and they make some great knives that I love to carry. Case makes some great knives that I love to carry, but every Jack Wolf knife I've ever gotten, and uh, full disclosure, I have gotten them straight from Ben himself. Thank you very much, sir. But every one I've gotten from him has been not only up a, I'm going to say it, perfect build, uh, but the design is coming from someone who knows, from an aficionado of this style of knife, with little tweaks and updates uh, from a modern man, if you will even if you won't. All right, next up on my hip at the three o'clock position, that's that's where I can carry this, is the Nova 2. Loving this thing. And yes, it will be this week that we finally, on Thursday Night Knives, release the details of this. We've had uh, a bunch of stuff going on here and just to prioritize, uh, we didn't want to jump into this until we were absolutely ready. Um, so I'm going to be putting all the details out and opening up the pre-order and we're very excited about this. I am very excited about this uh, because I've been carrying it and it is awesome. You can kind of see the tip has gotten a lot of work. Um, it's it's very, very much a tip knife. It, it is a great utility cutter. I mean, look at it. It's a giant Kiridashi. I mean, it's not giant. It's a, it's a nearly four inch Kiridashi uh, or I, initially I was calling it a sax, but the more I... I look at it, my my real influence for this was the Kiridashi, the, the Japanese utility knife. Uh, but with that extreme angle at the tip, it's also pretty weapony. Um, so it, it'll cover a lot of different bases for you. I haven't used it in that sense, never will, hopefully. Uh, I know it would do great, <laughs> but I've uh, been using this a lot for everything else because it's in my it's in my waistband and I wanna I wanna use it. Any chance I get to cut, I've been pulling this out. Um, it looks really nice next to the Nova 1. I should have brought it out. It is ever so slightly longer by about an eighth of an inch, I'd say. Um, but to me, it has the sense of being, it feels longer because of that straight edge. The Nova 1 has the recurve and the upswept uh, buoy shape. This has that absolutely straight but 
upward rising to the center line tip shape. And uh, that kind of just kind of makes it feel bigger to me. Um, and what else makes it feel bigger is the sheath because the sheath has to come to a bit of a point due to the, the blade shape as opposed to the more rounded sheath tip uh, to the Nova one. Lastly, for emotional support, pardon me, the TR2 from ProTech. Uh, love this knife. This one I got on the uh, from Blade Forums. I got it from a, a farmer in Texas is the story. And he had, I believe the story because he said, I used, I bought this and used it for harvest this past season. And now I'm moving it along. And uh, when I got it, it really, I, I cleaned it out. I flushed it out. I did not have the guts to take it apart, but I just flushed it with oil. I kept opening and closing it and doing one of these numbers here where you, where you kind of put the oil in there, kind of like you do with a slip joint, put the oil in there and kind of flush it out. Um, and all sorts of of very light colored tan, fine, fine grain. It must have been sand or whatever the dry Texas soil was uh, came kind of flowing out in the oil. It's kind of neat. Uh, and it went from gritty to super smooth. And then um, when we repainted my daughter's room at some point when she decided she hated pink and we painted it blue, um, I used this as my knife and I haven't been able to get... Uh, that out of the knurling here. Really awesome knurling in this aluminum. Later, we're going to be talking about aluminum handled knives. And uh, that's why I carried this today because uh, it tucks discreetly in my back left pocket next to my bandana. And I wanted to get in the spirit of aluminum. Um, the knurling here, these patches at the pommel and near the ricasso up here at the front is so grippy. The um, channels here, the jimping, uh, right uh, where the thumb rests and where the forefinger goes, so sharp, not sharp, uncomfortable, but sharp and decisive. The jimping, I, something I love about aluminum handles, especially with Protec and Microtech, is when you mill gription of any sort, whether it's knurling or um, a jimping in it, it's so good. It feels so good. It feels better than than steel on my hand for some reason. I'm not sure why or if that's psychosomatic or what it is. Uh, but anyway, the aluminum on this, the milling is so outstanding and the action, of course, ProTech action. It's amazing. So I've been carrying um, the out the sides from Microtech more recently than ProTech and have discovered when putting them next to each other that the ProTechs are crispy and the Microtechs are crunchy. That's the only way I can differentiate. You know, uh, when it, when I go between Protec and Benchmade autos, I say Bench uh, that uh, Protechs snap out, Benchmades slap out. There's kind of a uh, uh, a different feel, a different looseness or thwack or something from the Benchmade. And when I go between Protec and Microtech, which are two of the best, it's it's crispy versus crunchy. Both are good. You want both of them in various snack foods. Uh, but in some cases, uh, crispy is more appropriate. In other cases, crunchy. Like you don't want a crispy granola bar. You want a crunchy granola bar. Uh, you don't want a crunchy crust on your baguette. You want a crispy crust on your baguette. See what I mean? All right. So that's what I had on me. Let me know what you had on you today. I had the Night Horse uh, by Asymmetrical and Dirk Pinkerton. I had the Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack. I had the, uh, or yeah, Midnight Jack. Had the Novo 2 and the TR2 from ProTech. Let me know what you had on you. Drop it in the comments. Because for me, it always makes a difference. I like knowing what y'all are carrying. All right. Next up. So, uh for the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway this month, uh, we have a very special uh, giveaway, and we will be joined by um, Chaz Fisher of Fisher Blades, Fisher Blade Company. This is the box. This is what he's going to be giving you. Um, <clears throat> so you open it up. There's a knife. There's the Constitution. There's a birth card. There's a, a um, sticker. There's a Band-Aid. There is a Beckwith covert user manual that shows you where to stab if you need to. And then under there, there's some uh, Jack Links, some beef jerky, my my current favorite snack. I love beef jerky. Anyway, uh, 
this is what he's giving away. I'll show you what the knife looks like, though. I've been carrying it quite a bit. This is the new Fisher Blades Beckwith Covert. Yes, named after Colonel Beckwith, who started Delta Force. And this is definitely a purpose-driven pocket carry fixed blade. Purpose-driven because it is intended as a self-defense weapon. Um, to me, though, it makes an ideal EDC as well. You know me. I carry knives, especially fixed blades, as self-defense tools. This would do excellently at that, but it doesn't come up often. So I end up using this for a lot of other things, and it's great at all those other things. Um, I know the philosophy behind it is you keep it uh, sharp, um, you know, always really, really sharp and never use it so that when you need it in a pinch, it's good to go. But I got to be honest, when I use a knife, um, I'm just not going that hard because I don't have that lifestyle. So I don't have to really worry about keeping 60 to 62 Rockwell AEBL uh, sharp w w by cutting my sandwich. It's not going to dull by cutting the string off of my lapel. It's not going to dull. And these are the kind of things I use it for ordinarily. So, so Chaz, even though you say this is just a self-defense thing, I got to say it also makes an excellent EDC. And of course, uh, he doesn't deny that. All right. Uh, so he will be giving this away, uh, with us at 10 PM Eastern standard time, May 16th. Um, gentleman junkie knife giveaway uh, if you want to become a gentleman junkie you can go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon or you can scan the qr code that jim uh, flashes on the screen and uh, you can become uh, entered to win this now your chances are pretty good because because um, it's kind of always the the patreon number is kind of always hovered in in the same area so <clears throat> it gives you good odds check out that qr code here and uh, you could be the proud owner of one of these in a couple of weeks. All right. Coming up, we're going to get to Knife Life News. We got some cool stuff to show you. And uh, I'm excited because one of these I really, really want to get. Coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Bark River Gunny Sidekick has a beautiful clip point blade with a high convex grind. It's the perfect candidate for the high performance Magna Cut stainless steel. And we have new handle selections available. Two Spyderco favorites just arrived in the Crew Carter combo for the first time. The Para 3 and Military 2 are both available now in brown canvas Mikata with CPM crew wear tool steel. And the Civivi Midwatch is a lightweight EDC that features a clip point blade with a full height grind for excellent cutting geometry. The integrated finger ring makes it easy to deploy and allows forward or reverse grip. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Along with the Cold Steel Desperado, the Benchmade 710 is one of those knives from the old days that got away. Um, that is the knife designed by Bill Henry and Jason Williams that, or, I'm sorry, Bill McHenry and Jason Williams that introduced the Axis Lock to the world. They, they designed that knife and they, des and they designed the lock and it shot Benchmade into the stratosphere, let's say. Anyway, I always love the 710. Uh, long drop point, long four inch drop point blade, a lot. Most of the tactical folders back in the day when this came out were four inches. That was a respectable length. I love that. That's why I always uh, tend towards the larger knives. Uh, so in um, honor of, I think, uh, the the Axis Lock, they are re-releasing this in their gold class, which translates to expensive class. And uh, there it is. It, in my estimation, I'll say it right off the bat, doesn't look as good as the early one. I don't care for the Cerakote or the um, milling on the handle. But the fact that they're releasing it is pretty damn cool. So it's a modernized update to the classic uh, 710. And uh, it's so that's a four-inch recurve, but it's Magna cut this time. Yes, that's right. Magna cut flat Darth 
flat dark earth Cerakote and a black anodized aluminum handle. Now we're talking aluminum today, so you know that I love aluminum. I'm just not crazy about the way that handle looks, I got to say. But that blade, what a beautiful knife. Look at the contours, the profile of this classic Benchmade. I mean, to me, that is an enviable, that that is a knife I want in my collection. Not in this iteration. I don't care about the Magna Cut or this special dress, but looking at this, I realized every time I'm at Blade Show, I'm looking for new stuff. But I know that I would be able to find a classic 710 somewhere at Blade Show. So maybe I need to do stuff like that one of these times. Anyway, uh, limited to 2,500. It's available now. Um, you know, do you want a classic 710 black aluminum? I have no idea how much it's going to cost. It's in the gold class. But, you know, if you're a 710 collector, for sure, you got to jump all over this one. Uh, this next one is cool also from... <clears throat> Poltergeist and Real Steel. Poltergeist, uh, Jacob from Poltergeist. Um, I've never heard his name pronounced, and I, I, I got to say, I can't really even approximate it from looking at it, but he's uh, Polish, an amazing designer. I've always loved Poltergeist uh, designs. He's got a new one with Real Steel. Uh, that's his sort of uh, avenue for his more pedestrian models, things you and I can afford. And this one's called the Sylph. And it is aimed at the, it, it's an integral. Yeah, that's right. An integral aimed at the sub 100 market. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Sub 100 market. Now, I know you, you probably already figured out how they're doing this. And you're correct. It is folded over stainless steel for the handle. It's not milled out like a, uh, like a <laughs> over $100 um, titanium integral it is folded over uh but this has two layers which not only looks cool but i think it adds to uh well a little bit of the heft because it's only a thin piece that's folded over it adds to the heft and also makes it a lot more modifiable which is which is interesting uh so here it is beautiful straight back blade that's a 3.15 inch nitro v blade so it'd be cool if it were larger as far as i'm concerned but this is solidly in that edc range um but if you look closely you can see those two folded over pieces of steel that comprise the handle uh an under under layer that is full and then a an over layer that uh omits part of the backspacer so you you can see underneath uh deep carry thumb stud a uh, deep carry pocket clip. It's got thumb studs. It's a liner lock. Here it is taken apart. Not much. Or not taken apart, but in its various aspects. And there's not much to it. Simple, beautiful in my uh, to my eye. And 3.3 ounces. So very light. And if you want it this very moment, it is available. So it has that going for it too. Uh, next up from Peter Carey, one of my favorite uh, tactical knife folding knife designers. He's a maker, but I could never afford anything that he actually makes. Uh, I do have a Monterey Bay Knives uh, Turbo from him. I love his designs. That's all I'm going to say. Great interview with him. Check it out. Uh, but he's releasing a new one with Wii. He did one before uh, called the Mini Nitro, um, or Nitro Mini. So it was this design, but smaller. And this is the fully realized version with a 3.75 inch 20 cv blade beautiful swedge up front i gotta say it's this is both aggressive looking and also refined and beautiful looking because the way he handles and combines materials uh is uh well he's known for that it's classic and it's always complex and beautiful here we have a bolster lock, uh, but then you compare it with the overall profile, which is quite simple, uh, looks comfortable to use, and also looks easy and deadly to use. So it's got that combination that I like of refined and gentlemanly and also uh, total badass. I mean, that blade looks like something off the battlefield to me. Uh, this will come in a variety of uh, carbon fibers, marbled, uh, kind of standard marble, but it will also have a nebula. A carbon fiber offered i think that's fat carbon and then copper or aluminum infused and that's what we're looking at here that's the aluminum um, carbon fiber right there so really nice high end 5.03 ounces coming in may of 2024 
All right, last up in Knife Life news, <clears throat> K-Bar Knives. We talk about them a bit because they're pretty active. And they have a custom shop called State and Union. I imagine that's where they're located. That's their intersection at State Street and Union Street, like all-American intersection. I love that. Uh, but they are releasing a beak, uh, a an Ethan Becker design, the BK76. Uh, this is a classic, beautiful, um, all uh, do-it-all outdoors knife, and it it almost looks like a Kephart, uh, but has a, a little bit higher tip. I don't know. I think it's pretty just looking at it. But what's special about this? It's coming out of the custom shop. Four point eight eight inches of Magna Cut steel. That's right, Magna Cut steel on the Ethan Becker designed BK76 from K-Bar and their state and union. Uh, super ergonomic demo, uh, denim micarta handle. I like the way it looks, especially on top of the Carhartt denim there. Uh, that That's a nice picture there. And it's got a, and I haven't heard this term yet, Selcon sheath. Selcon. Uh, Selcon is uh, uh, I'm presumably... Yet another brand of thermal mold plastic, because when you look at it, it looks like Kydex. Uh, available now, but very limited. So if you're a, a, an Ethan Becker collector, a K-Bar collector, or an outdoorsman that's been looking for a great new 4.88 inch Magna Cut full flat ground knife, jump on it, because uh, these won't last long at all. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at some new knives that have come across uh, my desk, sent to me by various makers, and then uh, a pen. <laughs> Liang Ma. Great, great knife designer. Just had him on the show. He sent me a couple of knives to give away. And uh, he did say to give away. He didn't say, I'm going to send you a couple knives for you to check out, Bob, and to hold on to and integrate into your collection. And uh, he didn't say that, but uh, he could have said that, and that would have been awesome because I would have loved that because these knives are really cool. This, immediately, you know what this is. This is the uh, everyday field the edf that stands for everyday field duty and i say you recognize this because it's the exact contours of the field duty his one of his most popular uh, designs when it is in uh, titanium and and carbon fiber and fancy steel this is a eutectic this is his uh more affordable line so he took that great profile from that uh, great blade the field duty and put it into this and it is awesome and i have to say of the two knives he sent me i was thinking that this would be my second favorite but it is actually my first favorite i'll show you my second in a minute it is also super cool and you'll probably be surprised uh that that isn't my first favorite but this one i don't know man i don't know what it is i really really like it it's got great uh front flipping action I like how the jimping changes in gauge from the sort of wide gauge to very fine gauge. Let's see if I can do this with my left hand. Yep, easily. Easily do it with my left hand. Let's see if I can do the <clears throat> reach around, the, the terribly termed reach around. There we go. Works great with my right hand anyway. <laughs> That's what he said. Okay, and then ah, ah, there we go. Uh, great on the middle finger flick. You wouldn't know it. From the fact that I did it with my left hand, I'm not so practiced that way, but I'll show you with my right. So really excellent 14C28N blade steel, fully flat ground, nice broad leaf shaped blade with that uh, elongated lozenge shaped uh, hole, opening hole, love it. And, the, and in this case, orange G10, it comes in a variety of different G10s, but you've got a great spot to come choke up on it's like a 50 50 choil but it's not super rounded on the handle side and i like that um <clears throat> also very comfortable back here deep carry pocket clip and uh, a liner lock so the other one he sent is the trinity and the reason i say you probably think i would like this better is that it's a little bit bigger and it's got that gorgeous clip point blade and it is gorgeous i love it it's got one more way to open it i.e the flipper tab and who knows maybe this maybe i do like the other one 
maybe I do like this one better, but I keep picking up the EFD. Um, the Trinity has the same exact build, uh, in this case, the same materials, that orange G10, 14C28, and blade steel, full flat ground, uh, with the, with the, in this case, three ways of opening it. You've got the opening hole, the flipper, and the front flipper. I do find, hang on, I'm going to use my right hand for this. I do find that sometimes, if you're not careful, a flipper and a front flipper work, work at odds. <laughs> As you can see by how I just dropped that. That is not proof of my of my theory. That's just me being a klutz. But sometimes I feel like when you use a front flipper, you risk pinching your finger or at least slowing or stopping the progress of the blade with the with the regular flipper, unless you're really paying attention to be further back. Probably a personal problem more than anything else i find personally and now just looking at the screen here the knife cam i find that when you turn a knife upside down where we're used to seeing the spine on top and the and the and the and the sharp edge on the bottom when you turn them upside down like this you can really look you can really see the shape of the blade in a in a better way because it, i don't know why but just because and i i really 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 like the shape of this clip point blade it widens out after the peak of the clip, which is something I love in a Bowie knife. And it just looks great. It's a great knife. I love them both. Uh, I kind of wish they were both mine, but uh, I can go. Uh, these are affordable, so I can go buy them, and I will. Uh, not sure which one. Maybe both. But uh, So these are the Eutectic line, uh, the, the uh, more budget-friendly line from Leong Ma, <coughs> featuring all his designs. Okay. Next up, I want to show you something that Zach Wingard sent Jim and, and myself just out of the blue, and I, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Zach. So he sent me two dick pics, not those dick pics, the kind that he sells, so they're special. <laughs> uh, these are the micro and the regular dick pic. So just so you know about the the name, my, my wife was like, these are cool, but why are they called that? <laughs> I'm like, well, because they're picks. And basically, uh, they, they had a naming contest and Dick Pick was the best, you know, the most catchy people, people resonate, uh, resonated with it. So that's what it's called. But what is it? It's an extra finger. It's an extra very, very sharp and utilitarian finger. Uh, here's the original size Dick Pick. Now, it gives you the obvious weapony uh, options here. It, it would be great. It is great. I've practiced against cardboard like this uh, in the reverse grip with the with this sort of pry bar uh, jutting forth. Yes, you could use it like that. This pry bar is actually sharp. Um, and this could do an, a tremendous amount of damage if you were to use it as a weapon. But that's not th the primary function of this. The primary function of this is as an all-around EDC tool. You can do all sorts of prying, uh, different kinds of prying and gouging and, and that kind of thing with with this bar. You can be percussive with this. It's like a micro hammer pull. Uh, I've, I've actually used it to hammer in nails uh, to the wall behind me uh, to rehang the uh, Fairbairn Sykes. So it's, it's a good little hammer, little hammer. And, uh, you know, you're hammering something into drywall, that kind of thing. And... Uh, scraper all around great thing to have on you 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 have it's got a million uses it's similar to uh to his oh, where did i put it similar to the the quill his uh his an another implement like this that that's weapony but has a million other uses now this is the micro dick pick or mini or micro i can't remember now uh mini i see it right there uh this is the mini dick pick and this is going to jim and uh, this is actually a great, this is almost a little more weapony because it's easier to hide on you because it's smaller, but you still get the benefits of uh, pain compliance with this top part and, and piercing with the bottom part. So if you wanted to use it as that, I know uh, Jim's not going to use it as that. This will go very thoughtfully, uh, Zach said. I know Jim has a, an ice pick collection. This can go into that collection and do a great job at picking ice, no doubt. So 
very thoughtful gift. And <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to Zach Wingard of Wingard Wearables, not only for sending these really cool items, but for making really cool items like this back ripper tomahawk. That's my desk tomahawk. We all need a desk tomahawk. And this one is light and doesn't take up too much space. And woo, it would it would do in a pinch, I'll tell you that much. So very interesting, very well researched and developed products coming from Wingard Wearables. And I'm so excited to have this right here. My dick pic, by the way, I put a discrete carry concepts clip on, but it ships like this. And you get this uh, uh, springy cord with these alligator clips, and it gives you a lot of great options for mounting this uh, in the waistband, in your pocket, etc. So check out Wingard wearables for really awesome um, concealable tomahawks and other interesting uh, weapons and uh, tools like that. Last up, is a this is a pen that's been around for decades. It's the Parker Jotter. You all know it, the Parker Jotter. You've seen it in, you know, lawyers and movies and uh, you know, guys who work uh, uh, NASA master control. What are they? Not master control, mission control. And you've seen these pens throughout the ages. And uh, the barrel is uh, usually made out of plastic, but now they have their whole line, and they've been doing this for a while. I'm just kind of into it now uh, with stainless steel barrels so the whole thing is stainless screws together with the stainless joint unlike the safari uh, click pens which i also love uh, but this is more stable the whole thing is stainless steel and when you push that out you've got yourself a little uh, improvised weapon and it doesn't look like a tactical pen and you know no doubt it's not as sturdy but uh, tactical pens, I think, you know, they 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 go way beyond what they need to be. This in the throat or in the eye or in the back of the hand, someone someone grabbing you or whatever, uh, something as simple as this could do a lot of damage. And and these bark uh, Parkers are great pens. They're not only great ballpoint pens. If you like ballpoint pens, they look cool uh, with the um, arrow clip. And they're classic, man. Uh, people have been using these pens for a long time. And I just think they're great. I have a number of them, but I only have two in this stainless. And I think uh, as the years go on, when I buy new Parker Jotters, I'll keep them all stainless because they make for great little... Uh, I'd much rather go to court having stuck a pen in someone than a knife. Let me say it that way. And, and hopefully I never go to court for anything. Um, but anyway, Parker Jotter stainless. Highly recommended here all right let's talk about aluminum we we're talking about stainless right here let's talk about aluminum i've been carrying i've been into microtex a lot you know that i've been into them a lot lately and i've gotten a few new ones and i have a couple of old ones and it made me take a look at the other aluminum i i really like aluminum as a material it's i i can't tell the difference in strength between it and titanium and um the weight is negligible in my opinion. So uh, I think that if you open yourself up to aluminum knives, you're opening yourself up to a, an entire world of, of great knives you may not have considered. Let me start with this dazzlingly um, anodized purple Gen 2 LUDT from Microtech. LUDT, large underwater demolition tech. tech something large under tech i don't know stands it this is this was made for for underwater divers quote unquote so like seal types i guess uh or underwater welders which i know is what um seals used to call themselves to to keep themselves secret i'm an underwater welder uh, but gorgeous very light and with the aluminum you have so many options for what you can do in terms of coating and anodization this uh, comes through as blue, oftentimes uh, electric blue, but it's more of an electric purple. There's a little more red in it than any way my monitor will allow. Um, M390 blade steel. This was made in 2023. And one of the very last Gen 2s in the, on the open market, I, I think. I mean, I, haven't, I, I wasn't able to find too many options, hence the purple, but I, I really love it in this case. 
Um, and I also love that it's got serrations. Uh, that's I'm basically all of the microtechs I get from here on out are going to have uh, some serration because I just like it. Their serrations are awesome. And truly, truly, um, if you use it for a long, long time and never get a chance to resharpen it, those serrations will work at least 20 years down the road. And we know that uh, from from various trusted voices uh, with, uh, whose name I can't remember now who did a whole bunch of testing. Uh, but part of that testing involved a serrated Microtech that he'd been carrying for 20 years, and it's still cut better than a brand new Microtech without the serrations. So to me, that is good. All right, next up, this one I highly recommend. Uh, no matter what your knife budget is, this thing is awesome, and it makes me feel great about the company too. This is the Kershaw Iridium, and it's got, uh, this is the black version, obviously. It it first started with the regular kind of raw aluminum. And uh, they came out with this, and I, I just couldn't resist it. It is it is a beautiful knife. It's I think the, personally, I think the blade, it's one of the most uh, compelling drop point blades ever. And the handle is great. Ergonomically, it feels great. And it's got my favorite Axis style lock, bar none. Um, and I'm talking, I like it better than the Ram lock. I like it better than the Axis lock. I like it better than whatever Kaiser calls it. Um, this one done by Kershaw on this Iridium, who knows? I don't know if all the other Iridiums are as awesome as this, as this, but this straight out of the box was perfect. It's so good that I constantly check for blade play, which isn't there. I'm like, oh, it's gotta be like to be this smooth. It's gotta be blade play in there, but nope. D2 blade steel. It's got to have a great heat treat. I've done a lot of work with this thing, and the the edge has lasted longer than the coating on the blade. The coating on the blade um, marred uh, shockingly quickly. Actually, uh, it doesn't bother me. It to me looks great. But if you're someone who does a lot of work with their knives, but also likes the blade coating to stay pristine, um, this one won't. But again. On this, it looks great, I think. That's D2 blade steel and an in-house design by Kershaw. Uh, just imminently flippable. This is very frequently a um, emotional support knife for me because it's just such a pleasure <laughs> to open and close. And by the way, it's also a pleasure to cut with. All right, next up in my list of awesome aluminum handled knives, you could not have a list like this and not talk about Victorinox. Here's the Victorinox a -Lox. Um, This is the Swiss Army II, a very, very special model that's extremely hard to find. Uh, this was gotten uh, for me by Byron of Splitting Slices, the Splitting Slices channel. Go check him out and subscribe. Um, he was on a, in Europe and went to a Swiss Army knife store and got this special for me, and I really appreciate it. He's got Bob on one side and then the knife junkie on the other. Really, really extremely nice gift. Uh, he sent it to me uh, for, for being supportive of his new channel, which is uh, super nice, but crazy and totally unnecessary. But I accept. <laughs> uh, the thing that I love about this knife and gives it so much use is that hawk bill blade on the, on the backside. It is a single spring, single layer swiss army knife um and this is the only one i have like that where where both tools are on a single spring i like that setup personally it keeps it slim but you have a lot of uh utility here and this curved hawk blade is so nice i use it all the time and i should have cleaned it before now but um i use it all the time the handles on these um a locks models are great just like i was mentioning uh, about Protech and Microtech with the milling in aluminum. Same thing with the milling here uh, on the Victorinox. There's a field of knurling or whatever these are, these little peaked pyramids for for texture. And they are both soft and grippy at the same time. Aluminum has a, a, a quality to it that is forgiving that I like. Um, it's not that it's soft and that I'm able to move it with my fingers, but it it's just forgiving. You can you can have two things at once with aluminum. You can have super grip, but also comfort. All right, next up, Protec. 
the Protec Rock Eye. I love this knife. This was the knife that allowed me to get my first Les George um, Rock Eye slash VSEP design knife uh, because they were very hard to find from him and also very expensive from him. And then this collaboration with Protec came along and they became this form factor became um, attainable to me and probably many others. Same dimensions as the VSEP and the Rock Eye, uh, but in a ProTech context. ProTech does such an amazing job with their automatics. Again, they're crispy or, or, or snappy <laughs> automatics, depending on who you're comparing it to. Very, very crispy. Um, also, not super, like the spring is not hard to close at all it doesn't give you much resistance when you close it but it but it does snap out with authority real authority this one has cpm d2 so powder metallurgy d2 not your average ingot ingot d2 and then this gorgeous and comfortable aluminum handle oftentimes you'll get that hard uh hard anodizing on aluminum and it has a chalky feel uh, to the hand. This does not. This came super smooth and has only gotten smoother. Personally, I like the chalky feel. I know a lot of people, uh, tactilely, that's uncomfortable. Um, to me, it's not. I like both the smooth and that sort of uh, chalky feel. And by chalky, I mean it's like a micro texture. There it is. The Protec Rock Eye. All right, next up. Now, these are aftermarket scales from a company called AWT, uh, Advanced Weapons Technology. And this company made stocks for sniper rifles and stuff um, and made milled aluminum parts. I don't think the whole stock was made out of aluminum, uh, but they received quite a bit of success and adulation for their griptilian, aluminum griptilian handles. Now I think they make a number of different handles for different knives, but uh, I snapped them up and put them on this uh, mini griptilian which i always thought had a bit too small of a handle now the length is about the same between these awt scales and the original um phenol or the original what is it uh, just grn handles but the taper is so extreme on the original handle that it makes it feel smaller here you don't have that taper you have a, a constant width all the way to the pommel and so it fills the hand much better. Um, this knife for me is the ultimate griptilian because I'm not a huge griptilian fan anyway. I, maybe it's not the ultimate. Okay. I would like that sheep's foot griptilian with the hollow grind. Uh, but taking this and removing that handle and putting this very special and block sort of blocky handle on here has really made it way more usable to me. And I don't have giant hands. Uh, so I, I would imagine this would make a mini grip even better for for those with large hands this one is a 154 cm version and i used a consistent angle sharpener to give it an ugly but extremely sharp edge uh, great knife i love this aftermarket uh deep carry pocket clip too all right next up another microtech so they're known for they're out the fronts and here is a perfect representative of an aluminum out the front uh, from Microtech. This is the Ultratech, of course. And I've been carrying this one a lot also recently um, because it's a great in the waistband knife. Uh, there are some days where I don't feel like carrying a fixed blade. This goes great in the waistband. It's small, it's discreet. Um, it is not as easily accessible. It's, it's not as easy to draw as a fixed blade and also deploy. Uh, not only do you have to draw this, but you have to actuate it. Um, so is it a realistic um, replacement for a fixed blade? No. But I do like to have more than two knives on me. So this one has uh, M390 blade steel. It's got a straight edge, plain edge, and then a serrated edge on the top which I love. I love this combination. When I got it used on the secondary market, I was not crazy about it. I was, oh, I wish it was just plain edge, but I'll take it. I got a great price for it. And I think I got a, a great price for it because it's very stiff. 
but it has made my thumbs stronger on both hands. So there you go. But I was very excited to have now to have those serrations because that's the mode I'm in. Um, lots of great aluminum knives from Microtech, and this is a great example of one of their out the fronts. Next up, from a company that does everything here, everything in Texas, and most things in titanium, this was a great way to breach the market, the sub $300 market, and it was to use aluminum handles. Of course, I'm talking about the Tactile Knife Co. Chupacabra. A really great utility knife, uh, handsome and classy EDC. It uses the Snex Superlock here. Snex, an Indonesian knife maker and engineer who spent many years, uh, or Malaysian, I'm sorry, I can't remember where he's from now, uh, spent many years developing uh, different kinds of locks and hardware free knife designs. And this was first adopted by uh, Wee Knife and Civivi when they did the fu uh, Fission or Fusion FG. And now it is licensed to Tactile Knife Company and they have it on this Chupacabra. Great thing about this knife is, well, it's ergonomics, it's feel, the blade is, is the best part. The blade is outstanding. Um, it's a flat ground, saber ground knife. So sharp. Uh, they, they really nailed it here. They really nailed the grind here. Uh, but the handle is also outstanding. Of course, the, the main player here is the, is the cool lock because it is the second time that lock has been used on a knife other than a Snex knife. And <clears throat> it's on a knife made to be more affordable from a brand that, uh, due to the kind of company it is, makes some expensive knives. The aluminum is the main player here that allows for that. If this were titanium, the price would, would have jumped back into the regular area that uh, Tactile Knife Company deals with for smaller knives, le less materials. So the aluminum here saves the day for those of us who are consuming the product. It also uh, saves the day for the maker who wants to create something that has that all, me all metal feel and that heft and that solidity but wants to offer something that's not titanium so they can offer it to a broader market. And that's what the Chupacabra, which just bit me right there. <laughs> uh, that's what the Chupacabra brings. Love Tactile Knife Company. And that Chupacabra has been a game changer uh, for them and for me in terms of carryability of their knives. I have the, the um, what's their, their first one? the not the bear but anyway i keep that one or the uh, rock wall i keep that in my back pocket when i carry it but this i'm much more likely to carry more regularly because of the size all right next up a great one from a great company we were talking about we before uh this one is from civivi in the we um under the we umbrella this is the sentinel strike one of my favorite knives from uh, 2023 the sentinel strike is aluminum with an integral back strap here of FRN, but the, the handle frame itself is aluminum, and man, this thing is great. Uh, the 14C28N blade is outstanding. Yeah, 14C28 blend <laughs> blade is outstanding. Great shape, perfect size for me at 4.6 inches uh, with a choil, but the, the aluminum handle really takes the cake on this one. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I sprang for this. I didn't spring for it like it was tons of money, but I wasn't in a Civivi buying mode, but I had to get this uh, for their button lock, which is outstanding with the aluminum handle. And they all year long, people were talking about the quibid, the quibid, the quibid. And I was very excited because it was the aluminum handle, uh, a push uh, button lock combo coming from that company. But the knife itself just didn't excite me. So when that same thing came out in this very exciting design, also very Kiridashi-like, if you align the spine and the handle, uh, I was super excited, so jumped all over it. This one, in in, in my uh, taste, is the best-looking one, but they come in a variety of options and colorways. Next up, this is the knife that inspired the whole doing of this list, and this is the Microtech Stitch. Ramlock in aluminum. 
you can get this in either uh, this and the amphibian in either fluted aluminum or fluted G10, and the price is no different. Uh, for this one, I opted for the aluminum, and the reason is, well, you know I like aluminum now, but also I had a chance to check out this knife in a preview from Jock of Jock's Knife. Uh, he had one sent to me uh, for me to send to him, so when I had it, I had a chance to check it out and loved just fell in love with the aluminum handle. So when I finally decided to buy a stitch of my own and found one with serrations, which actually wasn't difficult. Most people don't prefer the serrations. Uh, I jumped on it. It was difficult for me when I bought this to find the aluminum. Most people had snapped up the aluminum and uh, the G10 were what was available. Both are awesome. I have the amphibian, which has the same sort of fluted handle, same sort of for same sort of build, different form factor. I have that one in the G10, and it feels equally solid. Uh, just a different feel. You know, something about an all-metal knife has a certain feel. It also has a certain sound. And I was mentioning before to really gauge the contours of a design to turn it upside down. And here, man, look at that. I thought initially, if you look at that uh, Jock's Knife uh, video where I reviewed this knife, I said the cutting edge to handle ratio is off. I couldn't deal with that, but that's all bologna sausage. Uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, I, I go back on that. All right, next up, this one is probably the most sellingest <laughs> of all here on the table, the Kalashnikov uh, by Boker Knives. This is an XL. This was sent to me by Lavender Pants. Haven't seen him around in a while. Hope he's doing well. Uh, this one was sent to me by him uh, to kind of get out of his house. He had some young ones at the time, and his wife didn't like a giant switchblade hanging around. So um, appreciate it, man. Aluminum handle here, textured and contoured. Keeping this thing pretty light. Aluminum is a pretty light material. That's why it's used a lot in uh, aircraft. Uh, and the aircraft industry it's easier to keep aloft it's lighter here it really benefits because it's a big knife that's a five inch blade and it it balances it out so that the blade isn't so light compared to the handle that it's balancing right there in that first finger toil and for a tactical fighting knife that's kind of where you want it right at the front finger toil or at the guard uh, i like it a little bit further back right where it is here on this boker uh, I've had a number of these, and they're all awesome. They all have the same solid feel and build. Um, if you don't like the design, you don't like the design, uh, which I got to say, personally, I'm not super crazy about the design, but I can't argue with the jimping on the pommel. Really can't argue with that. And I also can't argue with the aluminum handle itself. I mean, it's what we want in an automatic knife, uh, but also. It just feels good in hand, and it's nice and sturdy. Also, I think that aluminum, I could be wrong. You could you could leave your uh, uh, nicely stated opinion in the comments, but I feel like aluminum is not as conductive of cold in the wintertime as steel or titanium. Hot take. Am I wrong? Am I right? All right, second to last here in my list, one of my all-time favorite out the sides, that's the TR3 from ProTech. The TR3, this is my snappiest, crispiest ProTech. It just, it jumps out and it's so polite at the same time. It's not, it's not a brute. It's just like Johnny on the spot. No play in this blade at all. Everything about this is super solid. It's like that Microtech. It's just that the action is different and it doesn't feel weaker. That's the weird thing. It doesn't feel weaker. So I don't know what they do differently uh, between those two companies. I don't have the guts to open them up. The guts are the druthers uh, to open them up, so I won't. Here we have beautiful fluting in the side. And I like the fluting here better than on the Microtech. The Microtech has great fluting. Don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but the uh, ProTech fluting on the side is a little more engaging. And I guess by that, I mean slightly sharper but not sharp in any sort of uncomfortable way, but just in terms of the purchase of the fingers wrapping around and digging into the sinking into those grooves. Uh, I think ProTech really has it nailed here. Uh, 
Great shape, perfect blade shape, a great size at 3.4 inches. I got this knife when I saw a uh, video of a soldier who had served in Iraq or somewhere very, very sandy. I can't remember when or where. I mean, lost it for a long time, dug it back up, found it, dug it back up, and it worked perfectly, even with sand and grit in there. And uh, I decided had to have one. Glad I got it. All right, one more in this list. And yes, it's a Microtech. And you probably know what it is. It's my SOCOM Elite. It's my official road trip knife. And uh, this was a first for me for a, a lot of things. First S35 VN. First knife with a glass breaker. First knife with bearings. Didn't even know bearings were in there. I just thought it was uh, spookily smooth. Uh, not my first aluminum handled knife, I don't think, but my first premium aluminum handled knife. This one goes with me every time I'm in the car for longer than an hour. If I'm driving somewhere further away than an hour, I have this. It's a superstition or whatever. Uh, that started because of that glass breaker. Like, what if what if I'm in the car with the family and I have to break glass? You know, well, I'll bring this. And you know how you get about things? Maybe you don't, but you kind of start your own little traditions or superstitions and you just got to keep going with it. And this is, I'm glad I started that superstition with this knife because it is so outstanding. I mean, this is a great one to trust the, your life to. I've seen other people use these, abuse these and test them into the ground. And even, even when they're at their worst and at their last, they're still kicking it. They're still going strong. So uh, I consider this a perfect knife for the for the for that uh road trip knife roll and uh, yeah i love it i love it the light aluminum handle puts the balance right in the perfect spot look at that all right there we go ladies and gentlemen aluminum less expensive than titanium lighter than steel uh makes a great handle and sometimes you'll see they mix the steel liners with the aluminum scales and you still get the lightness, but you get more strength and all of that. So, uh, aluminum, I don't know. I don't know if it gets a bad rap, but it's sort of like people kind of look like, Oh yeah, it's aluminum. That's fine. That aluminum has got a great personality, but it doesn't turn me on kind of thing. But, uh, take another look. Aluminum just might turn you on. All right. That's it for this edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Be sure to join us on Sunday for Andrew Farlano. Great conversation with a great dude, and his knives are super awesome. Trained Monkey Blade Co. Andrew Farlano, Trained Monkey. Uh, if you like tactical fixed blade knives, uh, this is from another Marine who, who knows, and uh, you will love it. So check that out. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.